In this video, I want to talk about the native instruments, play series instruments, and specifically the sequencer in those instruments. I've talked about them many times in expansion videos in the past, and the thing occurred to me after talking to uh, a new friend of mine who's also into Machine and Ableton, and I was telling him about the sequencer and how great it is and stuff, and it's like, yes, I've shown you guys this stuff in other videos, but it's going to be pretty much impossible for you to find if you just go search through my YouTube video. So I want to have one video that exists just for this special feature of the Play Series instruments because I think it's fantastic and I think everybody who uses these instruments can benefit from them. But there's something very specific that sets them apart from other sequencers on other instruments and that is just this ability to play with the root key and the scale. So I'm going to go over that quite specifically and give you a chance to understand why it's important, especially if you're not really you know, keyed into music theory and uh, maybe keyboard skills and stuff like that. There you go. Let's do more of these in the future, maybe. Hey, give me a thumbs up if you if you agree with me. And maybe a, a comment because YouTube loves it when you guys comment. Really drives up the algorithm. So here we go. So Deftlines is the latest play series instrument. I'm going to use that one. This applies to every play series instrument and even applies to old ones like hybrid keys. They've added this ability to uh, to those old instruments as well. OK, so I've got a patch here. It's just this ice piano patch that I tweaked a little bit from Deft Lines. And I'm on the sequencer tab. So if you can't see the sequencer tab, all you got to do is click on the word seek. As soon as you turn the power button on, now it's going to trigger whatever is in your pitch and velocity sequencer. You can tell whatever note I play, just going to keep triggering it according to the velocity. And of course, I could go and take some of these velocities down. So if you want to get rid of a note and not have a note play in your sequence, you just set the velocity to zero. You can also set your steps right here. And the steps are going to determine how many times it repeats. And then we can also determine how long each step is with this little rate over here. So I'm going to change a note on this by putting this up. Let's go up a fifth. So we'll go up plus a fifth. So it's going to be whatever your note is plus a fifth. So it's a C plus a fifth is a G. And then if I set my steps to eight, it's just going to repeat. And that kind of thing that I just played there works really nicely because the root and the fifth is going to work pretty much on any chord. So let me cut right to the chase and then I'll go to some of the deeper stuff. And the song that I'm playing with is in E minor. So if I play an E, it goes E, F sharp, and then up to a B, up to the fifth. And that sounds great. But my next chord is a C major chord in the key of E minor. And if I play a C major chord there, it's going to play the, these intervals, C and then a major second up and then a, f a fifth up. Let me just give you an example with this little idea that's in E minor. If I play now an F sharp, that F sharp is going to go F sharp and then major second up, which is a G sharp, and then a fifth up from that, which is a C sharp. None of those second notes are in the key of E minor. So what ends up happening is your little sequence that you've got just doesn't work. It won't work because it's pushing intervals. It's making notes that aren't even in the right key. So let's listen to what that sounds like. You can hear how that's just not working. It's not right. Watch what happens when I go, OK, my root key is E and the scale I want to stick to is E minor. Now when I play an E note, it's doing the E F sharp B and that sounds great. So when I play an F sharp, it should be playing a G sharp after that because we've got a major second and then it should be playing a perfect fifth above that, which is a C sharp. But neither of those notes, as I said, are in E minor. So it's going to push both of those up to a note that's actually in the key of E minor and it's going to sound good. So all of that music theory to say, don't even worry about it, put it in the key of your song. And then when you play any note on the keyboard now, it's going to push notes so that they stay in E minor. Watch what happens. I'm going to play first the E and the F sharp. Now I'm going to play any note. I'm even playing E flat. 
flat. All that to say, now my little tiny riff that I just made, this little tiny sequence, no matter what note I play, is going to stick in the key of E minor, and it's going to sound good. Try this on any other sequencer that doesn't have this feature, and you'll see what I mean. You'll see how it doesn't work. You want to see how it doesn't work? Watch this. When I turn this scale thing off, now let's try it. Sounds wrong. E flat. No. Right? So that's what's going to happen in any other sequencer. And that's why this whole sequencer thing is just so beautiful. It's useful. And even more importantly, it's useful to people who don't have this music theory training yet. And I say yet because you're going to keep watching my videos and you're going to get more music theory. So just stay tuned and stick with me and we'll, we'll get you there. And I've got some old videos already that I'll point you to that are going to help you. So now I think I've shown you how the scale thing works, how important it is. Now let's just go over a few of the other things in the interface of the sequencer so that you have those tools ready to come back to. You can watch it now, play with it a bit, forget it. And then three months later, you can come back and watch this video again and remind yourself. And if you guys think that I do this stuff and remember everything, that's not true. I come back and watch my own videos sometimes because sometimes I'll spend like a week researching something or reading the manual, make the video, and then I forget it a month or two later or three months later. So first off, we've got things like latch. So with latch turned on, all I have to do is hold down a note and it's going to keep playing while the sequence is playing. kind of a nice way to work if you just want to tap it or if you want to play it on the pads of your machine. If I turn it off now, of course, we have to hold down the note. Which is kind of a neat thing as well, because I can kind of restart this little sequence at different states. It's almost like triggering a sample. If I have re-trigger turned on, watch what happens when I play any notes, even if they're legato. Kind of cool. You can kind of play with your sequencer now. You can actually. Isn't that cool? So I'm kind of playing notes a little bit and then letting the sequencer kick in and it's getting some really interesting rhythmic results. So another really neat thing that you can do just by turning this little uh, re-trigger on. So it's so a latch, kind of keeps playing. You just tap it once. Re-trigger means the pattern will start over every time you play a note. A different benefit for both behaviors there. Okay, rate is obvious that's going to make our pattern a lot faster or slower. Hold on, here we go. It goes to 30 seconds. A couple other things. Swing, of course, you want to put some swing on. Let's listen to that. Let's play with this pattern a bit and make it a little bit more interesting. Here is the pattern. So you can hear I've got things going down an octave and going up a lot higher, and that makes it a much more interesting pattern. Playing around with it, playing around with the velocities a little bit makes it a little bit more interesting. And as you hear, I've got some swing on there now. So of course, we can crank the swing up to match the swing of your project. First step just means it's going to start at the first step or it's not. So uh, you can play around with, get some different results. Okay, so we got the root key, we got the scale, and don't forget with the scale, you could try different scale types out. I'm often using the Dorian mode. I love that mode. It sounds really great with certain styles of music. Phrygian sounds really great with trap and uh, heavy metal, but uh, yeah, give it a try. Phrygian. Anyway, so let's set it back to uh, minor. And then over here on the right hand side, we've got scale by velocity. So what that means is if you play hard, it's going to scale the velocities that you've got in your sequencer according to you know how hard you played. So it's still going to make differences. If I play soft, it's still going to make differences and it's going to scale those notes lower as well. And louder. And then now let's take scale by velocity off. Doesn't matter how hard I play, it's just going to actually 
be dictated by whatever you've got in your velocity lane here on the sequencer. Layer routing means you can actually just have this sequence go to both layers or just one layer. So right now on my uh, patch that I've got, click on it. So we've got toy piano and an upright piano. And it's kind of mixed between them. Let's put them right in the middle. Now let's go to the sequencer, turn it on. And then let's turn this off. Oh, that does nothing. And then let's go to A. Oh, that's cool, hey? Oh, wow, it gets a really interesting result. I've never tried that before. But it's layer routing. Right now, it means only layer A is getting the sequencer, and the other one is just ringing out, playing its note. It's kind of cool. And then if I set it to B, it will be the opposite. And then if I set it to both of them, now we're just hearing both layers. Because remember, with all these play series instruments, you have two different layers, the left layer and the right layer. That doesn't mean left speaker, right speaker, but it just means these two different layers are part of your patch. Love that. And then we've got down here, we've got 16 steps. We can choose how many steps there are. We can choose the direction. It goes forward. It goes backward. It goes backward, then forward. You know, all different ways you can have that go around, which is kind of fun. Let's try backward. And then we can play with the gate too. And that's going to, you're going to notice that on, on maybe synth patches that are maybe have more sustain to them. But we can get a really short clipped kind of sound out of our patches. It's kind of cool. So that's the gate. Just command click or control click on a PC and you'll set your gate right back to uh, zero. Now let's just play around with this little thing in our uh, song. Try with if I play legato notes, it continues on. So switch, and then right here. Oh, that's so cool, hey. And then if I have it on re-trigger, of course, it would start over again. But not having re-trigger on works beautifully in that little passage because it switches between the two chords in the middle of my sequence. So I hope you're understanding how powerful this sequencer is. I'm not going to talk about macros today. We'll do macros in another video and then I'll come back to the sequencer for that. But this video just wanted to go over the sequencer, show you how powerful it is and show you how uh, important it is that you dig into some of these things on these synthesizers that you've got. So many people have at least one play series instrument. And once you realize how powerful this little sequence thing is, all you got to do is mess around with the position of those note pitches and then set your root key and it's going to sound right. It's just going to work, but you're going to create something that is unique. And it's going to take your passages up to the next level, especially if you don't have keyboard skills. One thing I wish that we had is kind of like they've got an Omnisphere where you can choose the gate length of every step individually. So you could have some long notes and then some short notes or maybe some features that we've got in Massive X. Check out the sequencer of Massive X. It's pretty incredible. And with Massive X, you can do things like pitch slide up to from one note to the next, just on one little spot, stuff like that. And I know there's other sequencers that can do that, but really none that nail this uh, key thing, this setting the, the root key like they do in the Play Series instruments. So give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the bell. We'll see you in the next video.